Oh. Yeah, sorry guys, just uh, the software decided to reboot itself. Um, and it's one of those ones that's very memory hungry software. So um, I'm back. Okay, it's all good. He's <laughs> back. Uh, hey, Locked. Hey, John, how are you? Emmy Gardy, how are you? You good? A few new, new faces have um, popped up uh, since my reboot. That's good. I'm just trying to get my position right here. Good. For the recording. Just trying to make sure that I'm, I'm including everybody. I know in excess is hiding in the corner here. Just want to include her as well. You are, you are In excess is um, hiding. Hey, in excess, do you want to come around so I can uh, include you in the shot? Don't be shy. <laughs> there we are. That's better. That's fantastic. So yeah, John. John is John is obviously live with this session. Thank you, John. John actually did make make a good suggestion actually. Um, maybe for people that have never been to Braveland, and uh, I know obviously we meet here every month on the beach. But um, what I was thinking, um, well, John was actually, again, John's suggestion was maybe just do a quick tour of Braveland for five minutes to go to to the different spots just to showcase um, Braveland, if everybody's all right with that. Um, any objections? I'll get yeah, that sort of all in the green, and then we'll just come back here. Uh, maybe we'll just sort of like use the go to and go straight to the spot we want to go to. Maybe we'll just go to the... Um, the um was it the 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 uh, the expo hall maybe we just go to the expo hall first um so if we all just all click expo hall um probably a good idea maybe if someone stays here um i mean i can stay here um sos you probably know it around better than me i'm happy to stay here um and in case everybody comes they make making sure that we're still we're still on the beach live <laughs> so maybe sos you want to take them because you've got um You've got your um, your stand there. Um, maybe you just want to show you at the Expo Hall in Tacoma Costa, a couple of other places, if um, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure, I don't mind at all. So I'll hang here just in case anybody comes and they wonder what's going on. So I'll just hang here on the beach, and you can take the group uh, across to the Expo Hall first, and you can yeah take them so, uh, whatever you think else. If anyone does not know how to teleport, on the top left that is on my screen, where you can see everybody's name, there's a go to. And if you click go to, you'll get a list of all the different places you can go to. Um, the very bottom one, again, at least on my screen, is Expo Hall. So I'm going. I've, I've explored pretty comprehensively on this guy. <laughs> the only thing is, um, I just thought of it because I'm recording here. Obviously, I'll be able to showcase what's been recorded. <laughs> well, well, why don't you go uh, so you can record the tour? Yeah. I, I can hold down the beach in case I Is that okay? Oh, thanks, Jay. I just, I just thought about that. I'll, I mean, obviously, John's recording live, but obviously, from his perspective. Okay, that's great. I'll, I'll join the tour. Thank you. Yeah, I'll have these different booths are just different projects, different people. Um, it's very fun. We had, a, we had a meeting here, I think it was January, early in this year. I think most of you were probably there, and it was yeah, awesome. Some people spent January. Um, yeah. Hopefully, um, Humble is thinking about uh, doing another event soon. Right? Yeah. I, I kind of heard about that. That was promising. So cool. So wait, let's keep going. Let's keep the tour going. If you want to go to, anyone have a suggestion where you want to go next? How about the concert I hall? The, I can't remember the name of that. What's the, the tallest building where you can exit? I think there's an elevator that goes into it, but there's one that has you. You can go up to the fifth floor. If you walk up or you can elevator up. All I know is getting up to the top of it is amazing view. That's my favorite The light, light tower. Not the, not the late tower, no, that's, that's on the beach. Oh. There's one that's in, it's right, right near the entrance when you come in. 
It's not the people on the end of it, though. It might yeah, be. I know what you're talking about, but I, I forget. Maybe it's maybe it's near the towers. Maybe we can all go to Tower One, right? And um, convene there. I think I think it's near Tower One. I'm gonna go to Tower. To our right, when we popped up here, there's a building right. to the right. That one down the hill, that's the building I'm thinking of. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not only just is the architecture quite quite impressive, but the view from the from the roof is amazing. Yeah, I actually um, I accidentally got my date. on the right it's, it'll take you directly to the roof it says two roof above it so just walk up to it and run into the door and it will take you to the roof all right i took the long way yeah no, that works too I, i've run up and down and john and i actually had a, a race once <laughs> <to> the top. <laughs> and if you guys don't know you can hit sh hold down shift and make your character run something we can all do at once is to get, jump in the speedboats at some time and just go around the island. It's, it's so amazing. <laughs> I actually love doing a, a boat race at the end of the session. <laughs> you are the, you are the champion, Andy. The fact that we don't have to pay for this, I realize that uh, I can't remember, Tiger, or what his name is, the guy who, who put up all the money for this. Um, it, it's amazing. Because, I mean, from a meta standpoint or from a you know, metaverse standpoint, this is the kind of thing I, I would expect to pay a monthly fee for, at least. Sure. Oh, sure. It's funny you took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say, I, I remember overhearing a couple months ago that there was a person in Blockchain Tiger that Tiger, pays yes. for all yep. this. I was like, yep. I can't. I couldn't even thank him enough. I mean, And, and not um, a small amount of money either. So. <laughs> right, right. Imagine. Where to next? I had to come on the, the tour. Concert hall. It's my favorite place, the concert hall. Yeah, let's go to the concert it's, hall. That's not good. So it looks like it's five from the bottom. Well, if you can stack us on top of each other, it actually puts people out of the side when they come in. That's <laughs> well, now that I've seen it. This is like such a beautiful room. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? I love this place. I was so uh, so honored to be able to play to, I would call it a packed house. There was like, I don't know, 30, 40 people here. Um, and I got to play my second show, I think, in Braveland. And um, yeah, really, really cool. Got to work with Ricky to put a bunch of uh, links. They're actually still here, I'm noticing, on the walls. Those are all links to NFTs that either are or were for sale. Um, some of my stuff up there, some of uh, my fellow RB NFT artists. So, yeah, this is definitely bringing back memories of Ricky and that uh, January event. Really, really beautiful room. Yeah, I know John does record these things, so it is permanently uh, recorded, not just in this hall, but uh, on YouTube. Right. Where to next? Let me mention the lighthouse, right? Oh yeah, let's let's do the lighthouse, and then we could all run back down to the beach and join any newcomers. That's a great view. I believe you can go up to the top. Stairs on the back. Okay, 
that at least is quite comfortable so that I can't fall. And if I do, then I can be strong. Yeah, you're making it very go. Quite soothing, actually, if you went up the stairs. I still stayed on the inside, went up the stairs. Just in case. The only other thing I thought we did when, when Mike and John first got in here quite some time ago is we went to the soccer field and actually played a game or a football field, depending on where you're from. Um, but yeah, it's it's a little challenging, but you get you get the hang of it eventually. The only other thing I think was playing was we actually had a podcast. See those rooms down there? You guys are looking out up on the on the, the field down there. There's rooms to the far right. You can actually go into those rooms and have a private meeting and close the door and lock anyone out of it. It's kind of a neat feature. Yeah, going to what you said before, this really does, I think it was what you said, it does feel like something that um, we would pay a monthly fee for. So really yeah. cool that Lot King Tiger just gives this to us to use. Another thing that's pretty cool, but obviously if people are new here, if you if you go into obviously a circle uh, where there's a group of chairs and things, that basically sets up a private little uh, chat space between you and the people in that in that circle. So that's quite useful for like having a, a chat just between like two or three of you or a few of you, rather than having like multiple conversations kind of overlapping, which can be quite overwhelming sometimes. Yep, I agree. Uh, it is noticeable though, if you guys probably already noticed this, just walking more than about 20, 20 feet, you know, uh, five meters away from anybody, you'll notice that your voice trails off a bit. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to run down and join everyone on the beach. Feel free to come or... Awake. Nine o'clock's already past your bedtime, huh? Yeah. Well, that's not true. In, in, for me, I get ready for bed right now, and then I'm in bed in, the, in half an hour. So probably my guess will be coming to me in, in a few minutes, coming to me where is I really need. <laughs> <laughs> That was good. Okay, I'm gonna post a replay of the of the concert if you uh, if you care to see it. I understand it's very late, so if you want to go to bed, I won't be offended. But um, no, there's no, definitely no. I don't want to I don't want to spoil anything. But there's a lot of your art on display in my presentation. So no, I'm actually, going to stay a lot here, of people. But I'm going to play ball. I really need time, but I will use the sound It's fantastic. <clears throat> Great too. Well, I did realize that. Um, Obviously, I'm recording, so it would make no sense me to stay back here. <laughs> so I did actually come on the tour. <laughs> so it clicked on that. Um, yeah, well, it's no good. Uh, I mean, obviously, John is recording live. He'd be able to see the tour. But uh, obviously, my recording, they'd just be just sitting on the beach here, just looking at the, the content at that beach. <laughs> anyway, I came on. But, uh, but that's good. Thanks, SOS, for doing that. Um, oh, yeah. Very welcome. Thank you. Dale, Dale's joining us. How are you, man? You good? Good, good. How is everyone? Good. Good to see you. Good, all good. All good. Uh, well, we might, uh, we might start the, well, not, not so much formalities, but obviously the, the things that we wanted to cover today uh, around the theme of today. Um, probably for some of you who don't know me, I'm, I'm Lewis Miguel Lexo. I'm the managing director and I'm co-founder of Brick BC Projects. Um, we tokenize Australian property um, here in Australia. Um, I know most of you do know me, but probably for the people that don't know me here and people that are sort of the, the recording. Um, but yeah, look, uh, again, this is, I was sort of reminded people, this um, you know, this is very much a community, Ravencoin community-driven event. Yes, I put my hand up to, you know, to um, facilitate and be one of the facilitators to just to organise it and, and be here. And But um, SOS um, also helps out and um, Philly is normally here, he's actually away at the moment, Philly. Um, LSJ helps out Indy and, and that, as a collective we all do actually um, for that matter so again I just always remind people this is very much a, a Ravencoin community driven event it's got nothing to do with BrickBC projects um, 
you just probably see my name there and so people know who actually I am and, um, and my real name, Lewis. And, um, but yeah, look, it's very much in terms of us continuing to educate and, and, and pass on knowledge in terms of what's happening blockchain, what's happening in particular around the Ravencoin community and um, obviously trying to welcome people to our Ravencoin community and, and, and be, be, I, I open their eyes what the possibilities are, whether they're an artist, whether they, um, you know, uh, whether it's in music, um, art, whether it's um, you know, again uh, tokenized real estate, so basically, just diverse um, the diverse we have got in our Ravencoin um, community in terms of the different projects that can actually be built on on Ravencoin blockchain. So again, just a matter of us um, continue to educate people. Uh, obviously, we are a young blockchain, so um, I think people there's still a lot of um, you know people that don't know that what if, is what is the Ravencoin blockchain uh, and that. And I, each one of us here, and the people that are listening, I know each one of us um, do our piece uh, in trying to uh, provide that awareness in terms of what's happening on the Ravencoin blockchain. So again, this this monthly event event we have here, uh, Braveland with um, Braveland's Gems on the Beach, is very much about the, the first Saturday of each month. Us trying to pass on the um, in terms of what's happening and uh, inviting people along. So um, so let's continue to do that. Let's continue to build the numbers and. Um, and hopefully in a few months time we can say we can have uh, maybe a hundred turning up every month so uh, again uh, the more the more we can get here the more exposure the um, the community gets and uh, obviously opens up opportunities for everybody involved in, in going forward but um yeah look at today as i say just um today's about the focusing on nft artists in terms of um them sharing their journey uh, wh where they were as artists before and um and what right what they actually minting on on nfts on the raven coin chain how that sort of changed them as artists and um because again we're trying to bring new artists on board um that uh, never never yeah minted at all on any any chain at all but um what it could actually mean from as um as artists so um again as as you um, know i'm not an artist myself um but i do appreciate art and i we obviously bought quite a few pieces of some of the artists here um and we continue to again to provide that um, that support where we can, and um, and also make other people aware what you, what you can do. And I think these guys are the benchmark, the artists that are here, are the benchmark of what can be um, what can we achieve as NFT artists. Um, but um, probably just go around. Um, if you're not an artist, um, introduce yourself anyway. If you are an artist, um, um, tell us your journey. We try to keep it sort of five minutes um, because. Once we get through um, everybody in terms of um, sharing your journeys as, as artists, um, then we'll, uh, we're going to have uh, SOS who's going to do, do a concert for us as him as an NFT artist, uh, as a music artist um, uh, in terms of um, uh, providing some, some great music. He's got some things in, uh, in, uh, in, that he's been working on over the last few weeks um, and he will always appreciate SOS's um, time and and, uh, and passion that he has to, to show to every month that he puts some some fantastic um, music pieces and um, we always appreciate you um, SOS for doing that um, but yeah given you on my left mate uh, you, you go first <laughs> all right I'll, I'll make it very short since I will be able to hold everyone captive a little bit later um, yeah I'm SOS I do make some NFTs I am very into making theme songs for people maybe I've made one for you uh, and if not then it's just not yet I will in the future as I'm looking around, I can see, uh, yeah, Dow, Dow, Ermengardia, Indy, Inks, uh, LSJ, Morgan. I actually have included uh, your pieces that I've scooped up over this past year in my presentation later. So I hope you're, uh, I hope you're happy with the, the music being set for your beautiful art. And you know, I really just want to say thank you to you guys because you're very inspiring. Your art is very inspiring, um, as hopefully you'll you'll see later. So yeah, thanks. Fantastic, thanks SOS. Um, Jake? Um, I'm an NFT artist, although I do own a bit. If you guys check my Twitter avatar, you'll see I have a, uh, you know, it's a panda. I like pandas, so avatars and NFT panda from Raven. Um, I cannot think of the name of, it, of the series, but <laughs> um, yeah, i primarily an engineer and I, I'm part my business, if you guys are interested, is Deverly Farms. We're making a pivot right now to move away primarily from mining, at least mining for mining's sake, to towards mining for load balancing sake, that is load balancing the grid. And uh, the, in, the end game therein is uh, trying to get as much power into the grid as possible and then to utilize crypto mining 
to balance it. Uh, one of the great things about Kicker Mining in particular is that it has the capacity to suck up all additional power. And even though I know some people are saying, well, that's ridiculous, why would you want to do that? <laughs> the, uh, the advantage there is uh, having uh, overhead capacity at a moment's notice. The problem with all other purposes to that end is that they don't, they're not instantaneously uh, actuable, whereas mining certainly is. Uh, it can be instantly turned on and instantly turned off at a millisecond's notice. And this is advantageous to the grid because the grid needs to be balanced at a millisecond to millisecond uh, level. So that's what our current project is working on. Um, it's a fairly small project, but is a project nonetheless, and is moving and pivoting, as I said before, away from being dependent upon the price of crypto. It's more explicit to helping the grid and helping society as a whole. So yeah, as an engineer, not really an, an artist in the sense of making art the way I'm sure SOS does or Morgan or anyone else here is a um, creative individual. I, I do have a creative side, but it's not in art or in music. So I appreciate it all. We're looking forward to, I, as John said earlier, he's not, not gonna be able to record because of YouTube's policies on music, but uh, Odyssey has no policy on that. And I will be recording the uh, uh, performance and putting it up on Odyssey because it can be there. So that's all I gotta say. That's great, Jake. <clears throat> that's all right. With the music side of things, we've got it covered. So we usually um, we put um, the whole thing on the on our YouTube. So both the um, both the, the music session that um, SOS performs, the concert, and also the content be locked here before. So um, that's all right. We we've got that covered. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, good to know. Fantastic, well thank you for that. Uh, Morgan, as, a, as an artist, share your journey in the five minutes. Five minutes um, elevator pitch in terms of where you were before NFTs and where you are in your journey today. And also obviously as, you, as a great host of a lot of spaces in Discord session as well. Um, you are you are a critical part of our community. Um, I'd have to say that everybody knows that the, the great work you put in terms of hosting um, your spaces and Discord sessions, uh, and obviously supporting uh, uh, you know, supporting a lot of people in the in the Ravencoin community through exposure and so forth that goes on to different people's projects. So we are very grateful to have you in our community. Um, you're an artist, but you're also a fantastic um, um, leader in our Ravencoin community. So we we thank you for that. Thanks, Morgan. Um, good fine stores. Yeah, hey, everybody. Uh, so the most of you know, I see a few new names, or at least new to me names uh, in the crowd. But uh, most of you know, I, I'm not an artist or musician either. I'm, a, I'm an art collector. I've bought uh, a number of NFT pieces from the uh, Ravencoin community in particular. I'm, I'm very Ravencoin centric when it comes to NFTs. I don't really wander away from it. I also mine, and my project is to build a portfolio of uh, better quality original art by gallery artists in the real world. And I've added to that a pretty strong collection of uh, Ravencoin minted NFTs. And I plan to take that uh, portfolio and pool it uh, sort of uh, into, into uh, if you think about securitization. So I wanna uh, be able to have people participate 
and the uh, economic benefits of owning fine art uh, on a fractional basis, kind of the way that people participate in Australian real estate by buying a fractional piece of a Brisbane real estate through Brick Koala or a Brick Dolphin. I was excited to see the announcement about, about Brick Dolphin come out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm at the point in the project where uh, I have I've individually tokenized these uh, these assets on the blockchain, but I, I need to create the um, you know the asset pool, the token representing uh, the the entire collection. So if I have say uh, call it twenty thousand dollars worth of uh, accumulated art in my portfolio, I want to be able to issue tokens against that, and that's really where I'm where I'm at right now in the process is is I'm. I'm thinking to myself, I've sold some of these pieces, see that I'm realizing strong gains on my portfolio art that you know, would be of interest to investors uh, who wanted to uh, you know, have an alternative asset in their portfolio. And so it's kind of time for me to, to really jump off that cliff and look at the next step of saying, okay, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna collateralize uh, a new set of tokens and, and really do this thing, really uh, uh, go to market with a product and portfolio and see if we can get interest buying uh, you know, fraction of known portfolio of uh, better quality digital and real life art. And uh, you know, just kind of uh, you know, having the apprehension that comes with taking the next step. So I, I'm gathering my facts, figuring out uh, my, my uh, methods and tactics and probably will be reaching out, especially to, to someone like uh, Philly, trying to get maybe a little uh, thoughts and guidance on, uh, you know, the information that I produced, uh, the products I've produced so far, steps. But I would welcome all the input from, from the entire group and the entire Ravencoin community in terms of uh, whether they see value in, uh, you know, tokenized collection of physical art, uh, if they see value in my specific collection, which can always be viewed at www.goodfindstores.com and, uh, and hearing feedback that might help uh, provide some bumper rails for me as I uh, contemplate going forward. That's great. <clears throat> That's great. Good find. That, um, that sounds pretty exciting. Um, again, it's, um, it's, it's one of those things that um, you know, sometimes you sort of question whether there's, but you'd, you'd be surprised the interest that there actually is out there. And um, do you want to just DM me on Twitter? Because I, I was having this conversation with Kevin Lynch around obviously the physical art and obviously in terms of NFTs and just some of, the, some of the ideas we were talking about. And we actually mentioned your name in that conversation because obviously knowing what you're doing, I just, I just haven't had time. <laughs> just been, obviously been so busy with the, the, the obviously launching of the, the dolphin that, um, it's been very Tom Paul of late, um, especially the last couple of weeks. Um, but do you want to just DM me? Um, good find just to um, just probably elaborate a bit more some of the, the discussions I had with Kevin um, about um, uh, again whether yeah, whether there's something there or not. I don't know, but um, I know I've had the chat with um, with Kevin about um, that topic. Uh, yeah, again, not not just about some of the, his ideas he was talking about that might be of interest to you. Yeah, I I, I will DM you for yeah. sure. Fantastic. That's no, great, mate. Um, great to hear in terms congrats, of... Um, congrats on your second, uh, your second property as well. No, oh, thanks. Thank you so much, which um, which you also yeah, are a holder of because obviously you're, you're a koala holder. <laughs> By default, you're a dolphin holder now. <laughs> are, are you fully subscribed on koala? Uh, we're still selling koala, so we're still, um, we're still um, trying to close that out. So we've got a couple of key um, cornerstone um, holders that are showing interest to take up some chunks in it. Um, again, my, my, my preference is always to try to, again, this is, we have, well, the, the reason we set up what we did was very much targeting the retail market, the retail in, um, token holders. And that's still very much, um, but there's going to be obviously people wanting to approach us to take big chunks in it, uh, which is fine. But again, that's not what we're chasing. Um, but yeah, we're still selling Brick Koala. Um, the Brick Dolphin, we did actually have a, a Cornerstone um, token holder that took up 5%. Um, but that was, that was actually quite strategic because um, uh, Houseworks, who took the 5%, are actually the people, the, the build developers who we buying the property from. 
So again, they want to stay involved with the property. So again, that shows their commitment and they, obviously the how they see the quality and and the, and the passion they have for what they build. So that's a great uh, for us. That was a great um, announcement with them. Um, but yeah, so that's um, yeah. So the koala is still available, and uh, we launched the the dolphin on the twenty sixth of September. So that that becomes live. We'll be able to buy into the dolphin as well. Yeah. It's exciting, very exciting times. I need to get some dolphin for myself. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, you are a koala holder yourself, so uh, whatever you got in koalas, you'll have the equivalent in dolphins. Um, once, once they, once we go live with the dolphin, we'll actually send out instructions what people got to do to get okay. their credit um, for the, the dolphins. Yeah. But yeah, pretty exciting. Pretty exciting, like I said. Uh, that's why I've been time for over the last uh, few weeks. Um, obviously getting dolphin all sorted and uh, making sure we got that um, 26th of September that uh, we can go live with it. But, um, but yeah, <laughs> Indy, share your journey, Indy, from before and now your journey to where, what you're doing now. Um, with you know, we we're, we're big supporters of what you do, which obviously the brick wall has got um, one of your pieces that's um, standing tall, and also the dolphin. Has also got the dolphin piece that you've done, the Miami Dolphin. So um, we were always very, we always very lucky to have um, get some beautiful art, art from you. But um, yeah, share your journey with us. Thank you, appreciate that. Um, yeah, so I'm Indy. Um, I created Mint Hood in 12, my first physical NFT um, back in 2020. Um, in real life, I make uh, because I've got a little girl. Um, I'm actually making um, hair bows. Um, and hair accessories and other things. Um, so that was the reason why I first NFT that I sold was actually um, a hair bow on the Wigan blockchain. Um, since then, I've submitted um, and I've two pieces um, made up of photography, um, AI, hand drawn pieces, um, and again, more recently, more um, NFTs. There's members of the community that are actually doing um, giveaways in real life, so I'm actually creating some physical items to hand out to see if it's something they want to include in their giveaways. Um, so I've got that in the pipeline. Um, and also my most recent AI collection, the Beautiful World collection, that's one that I'm actually expanding um, to sort of include people from around the world in that one, so that's a bit of a growing collection. And I think that's it. No, that's great, Indy. Um, we look for any any sort of things that are, are coming up that's on the um, on the drawing board, so to speak. Um, new any 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 new um, art pieces that you got planned? Um, I'm in the middle of drawing one at the moment. I'm actually going to be doing it Trade those and put other NFT pieces as well in the future. Um, but that's a work in progress at the moment. Oh, nice, nice. And uh, and of course, uh, we all know that LSJ is officially an artist, so I guess he's um, got the qualifications to help you then. <laughs> LSJ. Yeah, sorry, President. Yes, he definitely has. He's a technical mind as well, so he'll be able to help. LSJ, the artist. The official artist. Um, I'm just like quietly laughing because like I've, I've helped I think uh, another person in the community to like get their coin to kind of over the line, but I'm like, yeah, we'll we'll see how the coin turns out because I've got to remember how to do that now. <laughs> but yeah, it's um, it's always a challenge. <laughs> uh, so what I've been um, what I've been doing is got a my NFT collection wise. Uh, well, I suppose we start from before that. So I was uh, an engineering background, and I really love processes and systems. Well, mate, so well. To 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 meeting to we as eight hours. To next meeting in the time that time that I have to meet. So eight eight hours to we okay. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tony meeting, you got a Tony meeting. Okay. Okay. Shut, 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 shut. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's a bit of 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 a
we had had it for sale, but uh, and obviously didn't realise that the price had been going up each month, and he, someone's bought his, which is obviously a lot cheaper than the floor price. So I think that's something you got to be careful, right, LJ? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like people can set their own price if they want to sell it. It's, that's the beauty of it, but um, it's not something I control. It's, it's, but it's the the floor price of the issue, and it's kind of, in my opinion, it's, it's always been like kind of a baseline that people take and, and look and try to assess value from that. So when people see uh, an NFT selling well below the market value, um, it's a, it's almost a no-brainer to kind of swoop in and pick it up. I may have done that to one or two that I saw going cheap early on. <laughs> so like literally, like everyone else, if there's a bridge of that NFT that I want to keep, I've had to go in there and like get spend the raging to get it. Because just because to me, it doesn't make sense for me, just because I created the collection, um, doesn't make sense for me that, that I just own it. Especially when like after the, the last doubling and the agreement's kind of done, then the holders will get to vote. So, and I think the vote is just to see whether the unsold birds with really kind of all get destroyed, or they they all stay up for sale. So it's just one of those things that I, if if I want to vote, <laughs> I have to kind of buy into my own project because otherwise, to me, it just doesn't make fair. It, it doesn't it just doesn't seem fair. Anyway, there's there's also a few other projects that I'm working on. Um, so like the, uh, so I can just see some questions coming up. So the, the birds with a feather, uh, they are all listed for sale initially at the ravenous.com. Um, so if you search for birds with a feather in there, that'll get you straight to the collection. And it's a really clean website where you can buy in, in Ravencoin. Um, there is obviously a, a market fee for the marketplace. But if you come and talk to us, we can try and work something out. <laughs> Obviously, I put an agreement that I don't sell below that price. Um, but yeah, it's it's getting really expensive, so I'm willing to kind of like go that extra mile to so that people can not pay over the odds. But yes, um, but also because half of the sales now will also go to community projects. But I like this. There's a lot of agreements and a lot of value that I'm going to try and give back to the community. And not just kind of like just make money off it. So it's, it's trying to just add value to the community as much as possible. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Um, so the last project that I did is the Raven Wall. I'm going to take this to be really fast. But basically, it's a, a big wall that uh, companies and people and projects can buy a little bit of space on and market themselves to the Raven Coin community. And what happens is that this the wall stays open for submissions for uh, a year and then it gets closed off uh, and tokenized and, and that just is basically a wall of early adopters so, so what you can buy in space on the raven wall is a little block, a little brick and you can fill that with an image of the, the company, their logo, etc. and then that, that um, brick also has a hyperlink behind it to direct people to their website and also a brief message that will appear when people hover over it with a mouse or computer, etc. Um, but yeah, that's the last project, I think. I'll, I think I've been longer than five minutes, so I'm going to run away now. No, I keep listening. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's, I mean, obviously, the Raven Wall is very much a community project, even obviously you've driven that project, but obviously it's very much, it's not, um, it's something that you've done that's obviously benefiting the, the Raven Coin community in terms of, obviously, as we all know, Ravencoin has got no marketing team, no marketing funds. Uh, it's up to the community to drive it. And I guess that's um, the, the Raven Wall is very much that helping from a marketing perspective with funds and so forth and exposure. That's um, obviously helping out um, the Ravencoin community. All of us that are obviously um, doing um, different things on it, whether it's projects or buying. And, and again, that's, that helps us, all, helps us all in terms of um, what's happening on the Ravencoin. So again, we do appreciate LSJ what you do for the community and uh, the Raven Wall and obviously our one of our go-to people when um, when the things when the questions get really hard about uh, the inner deep of Raven, the Raven Coin blockchain and um, and the fundamentals. Uh, you are always with the person that we go to <laughs> to articulate it in a very 
very articulate way that you put it. So we we we, we are very lucky to have you um, in terms of what you do in our, in our community. So thank you for that. Um, uh, with the Raven Wall, we we Brick BC is actually on the Raven Wall. Um, uh, there's bricks there. We're trying to get um, real estate exchange, DigiShare, sister company, secondary market, so they can put their bricks on the wall as well because they're using a native token called bricks. So there's be lots of bricks thrown around. So just to confuse everybody. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's a fantastic project. So uh, again, yeah, I think as a collective, we all sort of keep exposing that and getting people to see the benefit of actually coming up, going onto the Raven Wall. That'd be fantastic. Um, I think Alice just probably just you probably still got a few people who are birds of a feather holders that probably haven't converted that into bricks onto the wall, right? You probably got some people out there that well, one that probably they not don't even know or haven't been aware of all, but so they just haven't had the time to 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 follow up. Yeah. So um, probably probably one of the last things then is that there's uh, a few like value added uh, agreements for birds of a feather NFT holders. So, so if you do have uh, a bird with a feather NFT, um, one of the um, added utilities of that NFT is that you can get four bricks on the Raven Wall uh, to use to either give to a project that you really like, uh, to say, yeah, I want you to have some space to advertise yourself, or use yourself for your projects or your uh, NFTs, your, your collections and things. Um, yeah, so it's 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 there for, for people to use, for, for holders to use, um, and if you'd like to kind of get on the wall, um, but are struggling to maybe I don't know, pay for all the, the, the bricks that you would like, try and find some uh, birds of feather holders, <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, ask them if you can uh, use some of the, the the NFTs just to get some some bricks. Um, what I would say is that. Birds of a Feather NFTs, those um, that ability to get bricks on the wall is not a, a, a like a, a once off and the ability burns kind of deal. It's a, a deal that is transferred to new owners. So even if you sell your Birds of a Feather NFT, um, the new owners get the, the ability to uh, create uh, those four bricks up on the wall. So don't feel like you reducing the value of your birds of a feather by, by not using them. Um, Ray Raven Coin needs all the marketing we can get for projects and people who are, are building on it. So, so that's why the Raven Wall is a massive Raven Coin logo and then people are, are adding stuff over the top of it and building on it. So it's much appreciated if you do know of anyone that's building projects and things. Um, all the birds of a feather holders and they're not using their bricks um, to, to encourage them to use them, please. That's great, that's great. That's fantastic. And that's um, again, that's um, again, we, we keep sort of putting it out there. Um, I'm hoping that um, Digi Shares with their real estate exchange get on there because I think it makes a lot of sense um, with the real estate exchange secondary market to get on there, uh, get some bricks along there. <laughs> so, so that I think as a collector, we also keep exposing people in terms of what the Raven Wall is and uh, and the opportunity to come on board. But yeah, thank you, thank you, Alice Joe. Um, Dow Dow, hope you're well. Tell us uh, your journey. Uh, yeah, so uh, my name is Dow. I know most of you guys and uh, been having a lot of fun the past few months just networking with Ravencoin and um, bouncing off of all the awesome artists and utility uh, projects that are unique about the blockchain. Uh, my background with art and NFTs, um, I, I actually do have um, some professional art background, um, but my, uh, I guess the focus of my activity currently is more towards um, networking, collecting, uh, curating uh, for community DAO, and um, making connections. I, I seem to uh, always find myself in the middle of a type of rodeo, and uh, I enjoy that atmosphere. Um, the games, the contests, and all of that stuff. So um, right now, our uh, unique sort of situation with Community DAO is that we're getting a lot of uh, energy and activity uh, with a group of um, artists, designers, and in Africa, 
Nigeria. Many of you know this, and you've helped me with promoting it and circulating information about it. Um, but we have minted on the green coin as the COM, and uh, we are actively minting NFTs for these African artists, but also circulating uh, many of your art pieces to them, um, teaching uh, them how to shuffle uh, between wallets. Um, there's a number of great projects and exercises that we use for that, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. Um, we have several partnerships that we're working on. We're, we're building a skyscraper in uh, a metaverse world like Graveland, uh, where I hope to have um, you know a gigantic art gallery because I believe that the art NFT front of blockchain tech is sort of the, the cutting edge, you know, so it, it, it seems a lot of times artists and programmers and gamers are sort of on, on that front front line of, of new markets. So I, I foresee in sort of the metaverse universe, um, NFT art being sort of the, the basic face of the marketplace. So we're looking at that and playing with that, but we also, um, are developing within our own, own organization um, a type of protocol generator, I guess you could call it, because we have structured a series of weekly contests um, based on writing themes or design themes, um, and we've been having a great success, especially with the with the African contingent in um, gathering uh, lots of material. Um, and each week we get better. Um, we go in and we try to help those who are maybe just learning about uh, design or writing even, and um, encourage them to express themselves honestly and creatively. And then we begin to refine that content. One of uh, a, an interesting uh, person that's involved with our organization is Alina Okumi, who is a, she has a, a doctorate in uh, market strategy and um, is actively creating a book uh, of the experiences that we've been collecting uh, from from the African contingent, which we hope to eventually make as an NFT that will be available uh, on one or a few um, exchanges on, on Ravencoin. So anyways, it's, it's quite exciting, and that's kind of where I'm at right now, and uh, I've, I've certainly uh, enjoyed um, getting to know all of you guys and want to continue to be a, you know, a good member of the community. Um, I will say personally that my uh, energy um, and uh, amount of time that I spend in Web3 blockchain has just ramped up since the beginning of 2022. And I, I think we may all agree that uh, it, it is <laughs> quite an addictive um, uh, uh, new focus for, for the economy, for philosophy, for, and for art. So anyways, that's where I'm at. Um, thank you. I enjoy being a part of this community. It's great, Dale. It's, um, yeah, we, you know, I, I love what you're doing with the, and the, and, and the team, community, Dale, and um, just watch you guys uh, seeing some of the stories and uh, on, especially on Twitter, uh, some of the things that the activities, uh, it's, um, yeah, it's, these guys are making a huge impact in terms of some of those African communities that, um, you know, we're very passionate about in terms of, again, it's uh, it's it's bringing the new frontier the people that now that can actually that the aspirations they had before is actually achievable now in the new world of blockchain and and some of the things you're doing it's fantastic because again you just see how inspired they are and, and around the activities that sound that you put on every week around the community there and you can just see uh, just from the, the yeah you know, just from the the, 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 the posts and so forth how much of an impact it's making. So congratulations, mate. It's, um, yeah, it's, um, well, yeah, thank you. And I, I would just say on that too, I mean, I, you know, a lot of the intent of my involvement with this organization was totally organic and almost spontaneous and random. I mean, I had no idea I was getting involved in interacting with the African community in Nigeria, you know, trying to, um, develop a relationship with them and then understanding that we were actually able to circulate Ravencoin into those areas and that was actually having an impact. I mean, they were able to use Ravencoin, believe it or not, to get basic economic foodstuffs and necessities. So then I started thinking, wow, you know, what would happen if 
you know, this thing caught fire, Raging Bull caught fire and in a, on a continent like Africa. So, um, you know, it, it continues to be a big focus and we're, we're, we're going to continue to hammer on that. And uh, we, we believe that uh, the African contingent, I mean, there's probably, I think there's like 1.2 billion people in Africa. And as we all know, I mean, they have volatile um, economies and, and political, um, you know, uh, just strain, uh, difficult. They're, they're looking for something sturdy as far as a, cer uh, a currency goes. And Reagan Point could be that, you know, could be that great bird, um, which could benefit all of us uh, and certainly benefit them in their daily lives. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think it's when you, uh, probably around two years ago, um, well, probably 18 months ago now, um, we, when Charles Hoskin from Cardano obviously made a very much a focus to help Af African communities at, at, a, at a school level, teaching to code and so forth. I mean, Charles is a very smart guy and um, obviously sees the impact it can make to some of these um, developing countries, especially in African and African continents. So, again, this is very much an opportunity for, for us to make a difference um, from, you know, a, as a Ravencoin community, as a collective, to really make a difference in a continent like Africa, that uh, to get yeah get people to strive for their their goals and, and aspirations through uh, the various means, whether it's art, whether it's music, um, or, you know, the various aspects they can do on the on the Raven coin. So I, will, I love what you're doing, mate. Then um, I was actually thinking about you, Dow, um, when uh, Morgan on Morgan Space during the week. I think it was a space or Discord. I can't remember, but during last week, and where Morgan had a, a charity. Um, out from um, from the African um, country, I forget exactly what country it was from Morgan, but um, um, uh, Sarah Leon, sorry, it was Sarah Leon, the the charity that um, that you had on your show, and I can see in terms of that community at at a, at a school level, in terms of creating art and and, and getting involved with community there to provide that pathway in terms of what they're trying to achieve as a you know with their kids in school getting into school, stay at school and uh, provide this um this um goal that they can actually achieve by you know, creating art and, and getting involved with community there. So I could see that lays links there. Um, I'm, not, I'm not too sure Morgan we've really had any discussions around that with the, with the charity, but uh, I can see some something there with and getting involved in community there. That, that, that's good. I, I actually I wish I had heard that. You know, there's just so much coming at us, but I would love to catch up with Morgan afterwards mm. maybe and listen to the space and see what that was about. Um, uh, you know, for me personally too, I'll just say one more thing and then I'll uh, pass it on. But um, yeah, yeah, I, I kind of had this negative view of um, uh, crypto um, maleficence, you know, <laughs> criminality in, in, in like Nigeria. And I don't know, just have sort of, uh, there, there are these um, things that float about, you know, uh, uh, this type of uh, crypto uh, um, outlaw. Uh, situation over there and it does exist but we've had nothing but really positive uh, communications with this community and they are extremely great people uh, funny uh, wholesome and so I invite all of you to get engaged with us um, it, it's it's a lot of fun and uh, I think um, it, it's a relationship that will continue to uh, be fruitful between the the West and uh, these developing areas yeah, that's great. And, and something I did make a point now is that um, obviously, and, and you would know this because you're speaking to a lot of them at the cold front, is that they're very challenged in terms of having um, you know, a desktop or, or a laptop um, to be able to have um, Brave Land software on it because it obviously it has to operate through a, a laptop or a, um, or a desktop um, computer. And a lot of them just haven't got those facilities. Um, and that's why that John, you know, blockchain John, that's why he does this down. You know, one of the great things about the Twitter, the, the, the live on um, on um, on John's show that he's doing now um, um, on Twitch is very much provide the ability to, for people in the in in, in African um, in, in in developing countries that haven't got the, the resources to have desktops or laptops that through a phone or any device they can actually have access to the live feed uh, and still be engaged and ask questions on on John's platform um, and I think that's sort of the next best thing. I mean they can't obviously interact like we're doing in, in talking here, but they can certainly still be involved in the live and provide um, questions on on John's platform there on on, um, on Twitch. So again, it's um, again, it's, it's great what John's doing to provide that um, ability to get involved 
um, uh, in, uh, in, a, in another way. Yeah. I think we got um, Ermin Garner. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you an Aussie name, Ermin Garner. Uh, you can, you from you you'll be christened with the Aussie name from now on as Emmy. <laughs> <laughs> something that looks like it has the same structure if you zoom in uh, something like a snail shell if you zoom in it's still spiral for example uh, so these days yeah i'm working with uh, tsp art i'm hoping to to publish something in the upcoming days and yeah i'm glad to be part of this community so that's it. Thank you so much. Uh, we love your artwork. Obviously, the brick koala does actually own one of your pieces, um, Days, which is a fantastic um, interactive Great. NFT art. So we do love your artwork. Um, do you want to just share with everybody where, um, in terms of where, what marketplace you you're putting your artwork? Where, where, using, uh... where can people buy your artwork? Uh, your NFT artwork, Emmy. I've been using uh, Ribbon NFT. Yes. Since the start. That's why. That's where we bought yours. Your day's piece, the day's NFT art piece. That's where we bought ours. Are you Are you looking to expand into other marketplaces, NFT marketplaces within the Ravencoin community, or is that just a focus for you? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. I still have to think about that because I was away for such a long time. Yes. There now me marketplaces mm -hmm. uh, so for now I'm good but I have to yeah I have to think about the future if I if I can expand yes probably a good idea Amy probably just to get it probably another oh, in my view anyway to get you more exposure also add another one um, an empty yeah. marketplace so people can see your work in other places as well that's, that sounds good that's just a suggestion that, like I said that <laughs> that's just my <laughs> suggestion because you've got some beautiful artwork um, be good to get it across, uh, you know, to expose it to a few other people and other in other marketplaces that they buy from. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Emmy. Great to great to have um, you on today. Um, got blockchain. I'm not I'm not sure what blockchain Jane can talk or not. John, are you able to talk? I know you obviously got the live feed on Twitch, but I'm not too sure. Unable to speak. No. Microsoft. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> well, uh, Jake, you want to speak on John's behalf in terms of um, some of the things that uh, that he's doing that uh, you want to share? Well, um, lately, John and I have realized, as I mentioned several times earlier, that uh, Raven has become obviously much more valuable to our channel than we previously realized, although it's pretty obvious that there's been that you can see that the majority of the highest viewed content is Raven content. Um, but we're making a move which we recognized in the past uh, toward a different kind of content that we kind of strayed away from. One of the things that we found out, I'm not sure if you've watched recently the interview with Bruce Fenton, running for the Senate in, I think it's New Hampshire, Connecticut, I don't remember which one. One of them was in his state. Um, and that got a lot of views. Unsurprisingly, to do more interviews as interviews seem to be a thing of importance for a media channel or a media show. 
so I, this was my invitation to the court today to have a position you can just see down some of your eye uh, if you're looking to do an interview we're looking for content we're looking to uh, promote uh, other people related exclusively up our alley so we, we appreciate that and, uh, wouldn't say that any of our interviews are particularly difficult or hard to, to do um, we like to know our people if you guys have ever watched our YouTube uh, what's the name of the show uh, hotline you guys seen hotline before no no I haven't seen that one no no one's seen hotline before okay. no well hotline is a <laughs> they say hot question <laughs> and, uh, I have famous people on the show to uh, eat hot wings and answer questions during the interview. <laughs> so people don't make it through the hot wings. Really? Um, it's a great show if you're interested. I, I bet you. Okay, keep I'm betting. Not just fascinated by the show, but fascinated by the United States of America. I think I've mentioned this before. So if you guys are interested, we are interested in you. Um, and uh, John has posted a uh, email that you can uh, write to us if you like. That's uh, correct. Like I said, we're not, we're not doing the hot wings. We are interested in talking to people to get to know them better. So, um, and if you have been on the show before, we appreciate that you do. Um, that's that's great, Jack. Uh, tell John is hearing. Tell John well, while well, John's hearing. So I think I mean, uh, I'm still waiting for the invitation to do an interview. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So tell so John um, when you want to do an interview, I'm available. If you'd like to know, if you'd like to talk about obviously tokenized real estate, so uh, always available. So if you like content, happy to do an interview. Happy to. Yeah, we'd, we'd be happy to have you. So I'll just need to figure out a time and then we'll make one uh, for you. That so, is. Uh, email is like I said, or anyone you might know. Uh, yeah. Some of our lawyers are interested in your area. Mm -hmm. We usually do one a year for reasons. So. Okay. Other than that, as far as just speaking here in general, we do a uh, Twitch stream live news uh, monthly uh, events and anything, frankly, anything that happens to Brave Land. And, yes. Uh, of course, we're always doing a twice weekly uh, uh, short news show uh, Sunday and Wednesday evening at 8 p.m. Pacific. So if you want to be uh, asleep at that time, <laughs> so you can always catch it later. Yeah, we do twice, twice weekly shows and uh, other additional content. Yeah, like Twitter Spaces, uh, seven days a week day, Pacific time as well. That's great. I, I, I did it. I did watch the Bruce one. That was a fantastic interview with Bruce Fenton. I really enjoyed that one. I, I didn't watch it live. Obviously, I watched that recording of it, and really enjoyed that recording. Yeah, some things that obviously that I found that I didn't know about. So it was great to um, to yeah, it was a great interview. Really enjoyed that. Um, Got Sunny. Sunny's in the in the beach. She sneaked in without me seeing her. Sunny, how are you? Hi. Hi there. Thank you for putting on space. It's really nice to listen to everyone. Thank you, Rick. Happy to be here. So Sunny, the spotlight's on you now. Um, share with us in terms of um, although although well you probably are an an artist yourself. You just like don't like to tell us you're an artist, but obviously you're a big NFT art collector, especially Ravencoin. Um, NFTs, um, supporting a lot of NFT um, artists uh, on the Ravencoin blockchain, and you are the you are the officially the the largest holder of diverse of diverse NFTs, because we got somebody that we know, she got the most volume, but just of one, but you got the most diverse in terms of numbers across different NFT art pieces. Do you want to share your journey, Sunny? Um, yeah, yeah, just just briefly. I'm just, uh, yeah, I got into the Ravencoin NFTs because I was already obsessed with Ravencoin at that point and thought it would be a great way to make some noise around Ravencoin because, you know, a picture tells a thousand words. And, uh, but, you know, I just deeply believe in, uh, I think uh, Dow sort of said it first that, you know, artists and gamers are sort of at the forefront of this technology and this revolution. And uh, so, although we're seeing art first, um, you know, things like renewal blocks and, you know, wine futures and all the you know, tokenization of diamonds and stocks. I mean, everything is going to be tokenized, but uh, there's 
probably going to be some art incorporated in all of those documents in one, sh in one way, shape, or form. So, um, yeah, it's just really an incredible opportunity. And that's what we're trying to do at WAGME is just create a network where all these pieces can kind of link together. And, um, and I just also want to keep all of the Ravencoin NFTs alive. I didn't want them to die in my wallet, even though I'm, I, you know, sort of am a long-term holder. I just sort of think of these as like future relics kind of a thing. And so I try not to get caught up in the drama of like the price and whether it's up or down or whatever, because, you know, then you're just, you're more, you're more likely to sell something if you think that at least that's, that's where my mind is. So, um, you know, I just try to appreciate it for the art and then sort of the courage that these artists took to come out here and put their stuff out here like that. Cause it is, it's really is like, what they say in a wild, wild west where, where the rules are kind of being made as we, as we go along. So, um, yeah, and I want to apologize to the group too for my frustration with that. You know, um, you know, one of the projects I, I you know, it's, a, it's, it's not fair to, um, you know, pick out anyone when we're all sort of uh, learning. So I'm uh, just grateful to be here. And if anyone wants to be on the WAGME site, whether have a post written about them or, uh, you know, we're now doing these Wow Wednesdays where uh, we're going to spin the wheel and do giveaways. So if anyone has any items that they want to give away, and I'm also going to be giving away some of my NFTs, but the point is, is to really try to bring in uh, sort of the artists, like Fatal Frames is doing it this Wednesday, and I think he's doing, I want to say, he's doing a few um, of his NFT giveaways with live prints. So um, we're really excited for that. So please try to make it out. It's really fun. We spin the wheel live, so you know there's no, no shenanigans. And it's just like a nice energy and anyone can talk and pitch their product. So, uh, and then on the back end, um, Surfcode is hard coding the website. So it's gonna be a lot more, you know, user friendly and uh, just fast basically. So anyway, thank you so much for having me. That's really all that I have. I'm just happy to listen to everyone here. That's fantastic, Sammy. Um, yeah, <clears throat> fantastic work that you're doing. And, uh, and again, you know, it's, um, you work tirelessly supporting so many um, artists out there and obviously to have now WAGME as sort of the formal avenue to really um, put, help people out there. That's fantastic work with you, what you and Sakura are doing. So congratulations on, on, uh, on your platform and, uh, and ever growing every week. <laughs> I will say got uh, Catbits just sneaked in as well. Hello Catbits, um, how are you? You good? Are you able to talk? Um, Catbit? Yeah, doing good. How are you? Very good, very good. Uh, we're just talking about sort of people just sort of sharing their art in terms of their journey as artists and um, in terms of where they are today. So, you want to sort of share? Well, we haven't heard from you before, I don't think, I don't recall, but uh, you want to share your journey with us um, in, a, in a five minute um, snapshot? Yeah, it's great. It was a roller co coaster ride in the Raven community, and I'm still happy with the community. And yeah, as long as, as long as I'm here, I'm gonna do awesome NFTs. Fantastic. And um, your cat bits. Well, just uh, just remind us in terms of what um, uh, marketplace it's on. Marketplace. I am in uh, Mallory and on Ravenous. Yes. You can find any. You can find cat bits there. Okay. And uh, in terms of the your 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 artwork, probably just did you want to share with us what your inspiration has been for your your art pieces, cat bits? Yeah, basically, um, the variation is cats. I love cats, so I want to make cat NFTs because I really love cats and I love pixel art at first I started with pixel art but now I'm trying the hand-drawn style so that's my new experience in art fantastic that's great well um, is there a new collection that you're planning um, coming up or are you just so focused on the current collection is there anything in the, in the, in the works coming up they love the shape. Uh yeah, right now I'm finishing the hand drawn cat bits because I'm planning on making all the current cat bits, the pixelated ones into hand drawn. So I'm gonna hand drawn each one of them and 
hopefully I could finish everything, all five hundreds. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, look forward to it. And that'll, that'll, the new one will be also on Ravenous as well? Yes, of course. I mean, in uh, Mellory, you can find them on Mellory. Right. Fantastic. Well, look forward to it. Look forward. Look to, uh, thank you for coming on today and sharing um, in terms of what you're up to. And uh, we'll look forward to um, the new collection. So thank you so much. Thank you. Well, the today's... Thank you uh, for having me. No, pleasure, pleasure. Um, probably just a couple of notes here before we move, um, chuck it over to SOS for the concert, but um, probably a couple of things just uh, I've mentioned. Um, so actually, I did, should have mentioned, I did, I did organise some fireworks for, for today. Um, if you go on Twitter, as a reminder for today's show, I did actually organise some fireworks um, right from down here, from down under in, in Brisbane. So um, when after here, you can go and check out the, the fireworks that are organised for today's show. So um, I'd like to thank the Brisbane City Council for those, um, for, for those fireworks. <laughs> um, on a serious note, um, well, not so serious, but um, we like to keep this hell lighthearted. Uh, probably just, uh, uh, some things, some great bands and some great fun we've been having over the last couple of months with um, uh, appointing, uh, as a community, appointing... Um, Jessica Burns um, from SDA Market says the Raven Coin um, honorary CEO, um, and again I just like to remind people it's um, it is a bit of banter. Uh, we've had a bit of fun with it. Obviously, we all know that um, the Raven Coin blockchain has no CEO, um, but again we've been having some great fun, and and, and again the the, SDA, the people at SDA Markets, uh, STM Markets, they're in Florida, Miami. They're great supporters of um, the Ravencoin community, um, great supporters of us at Rick BC and, 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 a, and a lot of projects that are, that are going on on Ravencoin blockchain. So again, we've had a bit of fun with it um, and just remind the people that, that there, is, there is no official CEO. We just call her the honorary CEO and you'll see some white like, posts on Twitter. You'll see the H after CEO, that, that stands for honorary. CEO. So again, this is a bit a bit of fun. Obviously, Jessica was actually on Morgan Morgan's show uh, last two weeks ago, I think it was. So again, it was great to hear from Jessica talk about in terms of what what she's up to and and obviously her engagement with the Ravencoin community. They've had they've had um, you know, they've been talking about on their YouTube channel, um, uh, spilling the NFTs on the YouTube channel that they have that uh, weekly show. So again, they do talk about the Ravencoin community quite a lot. So I think um, I think we may not to keep engaging um, with the SDA markets who are big supporters of us uh, as a Ravencoin community and let's support them. So again, it goes hand in hand. People support each other and uh, let's keep supporting them. And um, and uh, I was just disappointed about a couple of negative comments that were made in regards to that CEO thing. Um, again, just, uh, just as a reminder, it is very much a bit of fun, a bit of banter, and that's, um, and that's all just not take things too serious uh we live in a world that sometimes given the the, the the challenging times with COVID and so forth i think some you know people can uh, you know just take some of these things light-hearted and enjoy and put a smile on your face and let's um yeah put a bit of a um, bit of fun into the world with some of these things so but just sort of made that sort of point there but um yeah look at um i'll chuck it over to sos um to lead us into the concert um Thank you all for coming along, uh, and I'll just I'll again open it up. If there's anything else, to, any mentions before we do before I do close, um, chuck it over to SOS. Any anything that people want to mention just quickly before we um, before we go over to the concert. Any reminders? Nope. SOS, it's all yours. Lead the way. Thank you, SOS.
house on side. I'm here to provide a little bit of music to really be in the background of your art. Hopefully Open Broadcast Studio is working correctly right now and you can see all of your art surrounding me. I am just in love with all of my fellow NFT creators' art. Um, I consider it an honor to be amongst you, so I hope you're not, uh, I hope you're not too disappointed to have me in your ranks, but a lot of us are here because your art is so awesome. We're definitely here today to celebrate that uh, awesome art, and I hope you like this song and really this art. These are all things from my personal collection, and thanks.
So that one is probably obvious that it was a pre-recorded, but it's a um, clearly a tribute to and inspired by my good friend Morgan Crow's RGB series. I have um, a couple of them. I love your art, Morgan. I think we all do, and I just love what you do for the community. Uh, that particular song is also inspired by someone called Zentangle. They have a cool piece that had red, green, and blue in it. It got me thinking about color charge, got me studying about it. To be honest, the more I study about color charge and quantum chromodynamics, um, the I can't say that very well because I've been drinking, but say it with me now, quantum chromodynamics. Um, the more I realize that video is kind of inaccurate, but whatever, it's a, it's a pop song, so who cares, right? We should just take your shirt off, hammer, and let's just, just have fun with it. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna surround myself with some more of your art here, and um, Hopefully you like and know this song. That last song was Everlong by Foo Fighters, well, two songs ago. And this is by Collective Soul. This is called December. And it's really, again, it's about your art, not about me. So I'm gonna drink myself in here and um, just get lost in the art. Enjoy, these are all my personal collection. Thanks everybody. <laughs> That's where I am.
Marco, yeah, okay, I think the feed is back. Um, all right, so I cut out there, sorry, not really sure what happened, but that last song was a Lost Song, originally written by Barely Know Her, performed by Sauce On Side. That was actually one of my first NFTs. Edition of five, sold out, so if any of the owners are here, hell yeah, thank you. Um, seriously, special thanks, of course, to Brick for hosting this awesome event. This is gonna be the last song, so I'm getting my thank yous in. Um, Brick, you're the man. I really appreciate you letting me play here. I will definitely be, be uh, back here next month if you will have it, which I hope you will, I think you will. And um, special thanks, of course, to all the artists, not just the ones that you see here in my collection, but also the ones that aren't here in my collection. This is just a sliver of what's available on Raven. I have my people that I like, my, uh, my Indie Bows, my Inks, my Mirage, my um, Crypto Eyehead, my Eduart, my uh, Ermin Guardia, my Q Mine Arts was in there, right? He had, oh man, there's so many. Zebratiefs in there, there's a lot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave people out, I'm sorry. But no, seriously, the other artists that weren't represented here, Sorry for not representing you yet, but I'm coming for your stuff. I am coming for you. I'm going to collect all of your shit. Anyway, um, excuse me. So, thanks everybody for coming, and I hope you had the time of your life. It's funny today. Thank you, everybody. See you next month.